Good morning, Adamsville Church family. It's nice to see everyone. It's a pleasure to be here, and I'm really excited to be able to share this story today. It's nice to share with our Sunday school and our church family, and maybe even others who might be watching today. We pray that you would receive a blessing from today's story. So let's begin with a word of prayer. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to share today this story, and I just pray, Father, that you would bless us as we hear your word today, and that uh, you would show us how you can um, paint a beautiful picture, uh, just like this story is in the lives of the people in the story. I pray that you would just um, bless our time together, and that you would help us as we go through this week, help us to lean on you, Lord. These things I pray in your name. Amen. Okay, it's nice to see you, and I am really excited to share this story. Um, it comes from Matthew 5, and it's the story of the Sermon on the Mount. So here's how the story begins. Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth, and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. And blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. You know, today's story comes from Matthew 5, verses 1 through 6. And as I just read those verses, which focus on something called the Beatitudes, it's um, Jesus kind of sharing his pronouncements to the crowds and religious leaders. He gives instructions to the disciples about the nature of the kingdom, of life in the kingdom. You know, when I think about this story and I think about instructions, I couldn't help but think about an instruction book. And just like when we are working with something and um, we need an instruction book to put it together. God's book, the Bible, is like our instruction book. And it was what was the one thing that kind of encouraged me to make a, a picture book full of his instructions. So the one thing that really has hit me during all of this as we're spending time away from church and keeping ourselves socially distanced or isolated is the fact that things are happening all around us all the time. Things are happening that sometimes we can't even see. But you know, I think about the instructions that God gave us here in these verses, and I think that there's hope in them. And I love the fact that he comforts us in our time of mourning. He is there for the poor in spirit. Even when we can't see him, he is there. He's there for the meek, who are quiet and gentle people and need his strength. Kind of like a quiet strength that can only come from him. And it's this verse specifically that really hit me this week. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. You know, when I think about how God truly does fill us up with his word, we've really been going through a time when we need to be filled with his word. And as I was preparing for today's story, I thought about a great illustration that has demonstrated God's presence in my life in these last five to six weeks. And this is something you could try at home. 
So find a white sheet of paper and a white crayon and use your white crayon to write on your white sheet of paper. Now, when I hold the paper up close, you can't see that there's anything on the paper, but friends, there's writing on the paper. We can't always see God working in our lives, but we know that he's there. We can sense that he is doing something. And I've really been tuning into that. God is doing something. He's using this time. He's growing us. He's growing our families closer to each other. Is growing us closer to him. And when I thought about this project, white paper with a white crayon, I started thinking about what would happen if you were to take some paint and go over that picture, the white paper with the white writing, with some paint, some watercolor paint. And you know, an amazing thing happens. You can begin to see that something is appearing. The picture of the life that God is creating specifically for me begins to appear in this picture. You know, two things hit me about this. If I choose to look closely enough, I'll be able to see that God truly is working, maybe in small ways, maybe in tall ways, but he truly is working. And when I think about this illustration, I think just like when we cover this sheet of paper with watercolor, when I cover my life in prayer, God is going to reveal the picture of my life to me. And boy, that really is powerful. So I pray that as you go through your week this week and you think about Matthew 5, verses 1 through 6. That God would speak to you about the picture that he is creating in your life. I thank you for the opportunity to share with you this morning, friends. And I would encourage you to try this at home. Just, it really is an encouraging thing to see that when you don't think anything is happening, something is being created in God's time and in God's way. Friends, I pray that you would receive a blessing today from these words from Matthew 5, verses 1 through 6, and that you would see that picture being developed in your life this week. Lord, we thank you for this time, and I just thank you for the opportunity to say hi and to reach out to my church family. I pray that they would receive a blessing from these words, and we pray for Pastor Ken as he brings his message to us today. These things, Lord, we pray in your name. Amen. Goodbye for now, friends. I'll see you next week. We love you, church family, and we hope to be back together very soon.